No, it was fine. <laughs> I uh, Febreze the shit out of everything. Um, Cause it's like, it was like all thrift store stuff. Basically a buddy of mine, uh, cause, uh, Max was coming to pick her stuff up Saturday. So my, my friend was like, well, you know, get out of the house. We'll, uh, go see a movie or something. And then we'll go to the thrift store and get your fort stuff. And, um, oh, that's perfect. so yeah, it's all, all thrift store shit. And actually, I don't know if you can hear. Oh yeah. Take me on a tour. The 360. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I just kind of, it's just in the middle of my living room, and uh, basically I got the couch under here as a bed and all that, and just kind of, it's pretty peaceful, actually. Yeah, I can imagine it would be. I'm, uh, I, I, I think that's a great idea. I love a good sport. Yeah, I just kind of thought, it was like, it's been a while, and, uh, like, because oddly enough, like a while back, like me and Max, like one night we were like, hey, you want to make a fort in the living room? And, uh, and you know, it was like one of those, like, after you do, it's like the pancake thing. After you make pancakes, you don't want them. So, like, uh, she's like, oh, this sucks. So, like, I just thought back to it. I was like, but I like it. Like, I like forts. So, like, why not? And uh, I was just kind of thinking of, like, what's the most primal, like, childish, happy thing? And then yeah. how can I do it and just bring everybody that makes me happy into it and, uh, and just kind of, and then it turned into this whole weird experiment. So that's fantastic. I got, everybody should do this on a break. I, I can't remember if this is why you contacted me or not, but do you know my story of the month that I took after? Yeah. Break? Well, I heard, yeah, I heard it on the show. <laughs> the, yeah. Did you want, like, I guess we could just ease into it. Like, uh, did you, do you sure. want to talk about that? Sure. I just, uh, yeah, I, I was going through a similar situation and, uh, we didn't live together, but I said like, oh, this is, this is just going to be an awful near future and I might as well have something positive come out of it. So I started, I didn't tell this part on the story, but I started going to the gym. Here, hold on a second. I think you're. On. First time in my life, because I weighed like nothing after the breakup, and then I thought, all right, I'm gonna read every shaker. Oh, hello, is it? Hear me now? Can you? Hear yeah, me? yeah, you're good. Okay, I was saying that I wanted to come out of whatever like uh, demilitarized zone of time that it was gonna take to get the breakup, like putting on some weight because I was just tiny because of the breakup, and then I thought I would read every Shakespeare play and come out with like with, like physical health and mental health. And so I did continue to go to the gym, but I stopped reading every Shakespeare play somewhere around, like, I started with, like, Henry the Fourth, and then got to Henry the Fifth, which I really liked. So I, I said, I'm going to watch every Bond movie, and I started reading Bond movies. Now the cat's in here. Can you hear the cat? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's good. I can't hear We bought this um, timed feeder for her because she's so fat that we had to put her on a diet. And it's such a crappy thing that she's now figured out that she can just go up to it and swat it, and it will pay off like a jackpot. So not <laughs> only does it, it doesn't restrict her food, it gives her more. Hold on. I can hear her now. This is Margo, the fat guy. Hey, what's up, Margo? Yeah, Margo. Yeah, if Twist runs through here, I'll grab her. Look how fat she is. Is that uh, she a Maine Coon? Yeah, she's at least part Maine Coon. Yeah, I had uh, I grew up with a Maine Coon. Oh, uh, really? They're good looking cats, but they're they're she's just a pain. They're like fur turtles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they get all yeah. So you were doing so you're reading every Bond book. Yeah, and I would wake up every morning whenever I felt like it. And then I would walk, uh, I lived in Long Beach at the time, so I would walk along the beach to this great old Irish pub called Limericks that the bar was made out of old upright pianos and all of the walls were like repurposed from the Long Beach School District from like the 30s, so there were these oak walls. It was so grand, but at the same time everything was really sticky because it was just a bar and uh, kind of like there were fruit flies flying <laughs> around. And I'd go in at their lunch, and there was never anybody there. So I got to know the couple of people that worked there really well. And I would get uh, a corned beef sandwich 
and a deep fried Snickers bar and a pint of Guinness every single day for a month. Because oh, <laughs> I was also trying to put on weight. Right, yeah. Uh, little did I know I was putting on cholesterol. But Yeah, I've tried way. the same thing. Like, cause my brother's a, uh, my little brother's a personal trainer. Oh, and wow. uh, and I'm like I weigh like 140 pounds soaking wet, so like uh-huh. like I've done. And he'll just be like, "No, nah, dude, that's not how you do it." Like, <laughs> how tall are you? I'm uh like six six one six oh one and a half. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, you're thin. Yeah, I remember in high school uh, going to the dentist, but for some reason they had a body mass index, and uh-huh. I tried to look me up, and I'm like, I don't exist in the like in the <laughs> body like. <laughs> But uh, uh, so I would go to this pub and I would do a crossword and I would read like a Bond novel. This is the first time I'd read Casino Royale. This was in 2006. And then I would go home and watch a Bond movie. And that was my life for a month. And then I do this other podcast called Super Ego. And so we were yeah. just starting that up as well. And uh, that was my life. And, and although it was really difficult at the time, I look back on it as one of the best times of my life. It was I'm, I'm so nostalgic for it. And yeah. I bet you will the same for this if you don't already (laughs) no i definitely yeah like i i've had a feeling of like like this is not just from the response just like this is like a special thing you know yeah because like i've never done like i mean i had one huge breakup before this where i was just like a mess you know so this was like in a weird way like this childish thing is like the most adult thing i've done after a breakup (laughs) is like yeah. to just kind of focus myself and um but yeah no <laughs> i could use a deep fried snickers though that'd be pretty good but it never hurts never hurts no yeah, so did you um so that was so you read casino royale and then did you was that right before you saw the movie or did you it see was the movie first? no it was in, early in the year so um i guess daniel craig had been announced mm-hmm. and the, I was one of the few people that was like, this guy's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And it wasn't like I was had any kind of insight, but I was just reading the book going, this is not Pierce Brosnan. This is like a thug. Yeah. Know? Now I remember him, yeah, because I remember him from Road to Perdition and just yes, being yeah. this like brute guy. Right. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, I was into it. Because um, like, yeah, I mean, I grew up on Brosnan, so... Like it, like from like it was, it was, uh, it was cool to see like a badass Bond after a while. You know, I know, I, I agree. I saw Munich and his part. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah. His part in Munich is he's a kind of the thug. He's like the blunt, right? Full scout. And uh, the minute I saw that, I went, "This guy is going to be fantastic." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's um, see, so yeah, I guess like um. So, so at like, uh, so after that, like how you did that for a month, the, uh, going to the bar and everything, um, was it, did you, did you set it at a month or did you kind of just, so you, you wanted to like, do like a month of that? I did set it at a month cause I knew I was on winter break from teaching. So oh, okay. I a month. And so I, I was also working at Disney at the time doing some improv and stuff. And so I just took a leave of absence and uh, I just knew I had one month, and that was like the perfect amount, which is about what you're doing too, because you'll see right around 30 or 40 days, you'd be like, I'm ready to get back into life. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's almost like the perfect vaccine where you just go, all right, I got enough. Now I don't need any more. Right. Um, I mean, I carried the breakup with me a lot longer. That's just life. But it, sure. it made me ready to get out in the world and deal with it rather than just kind of, you, you need to go through that like, loss or mourning period and it was a great way to do it yeah it's definitely like um like with 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 like what i'm kind of doing is like it's more like i'm i'm working like i'm more productive than i've ever been so uh i have been there have been moments where i've thought like am i tricking myself or am i distracting myself or am i actually um learning but i feel like even in the past few days, um, just having like friends open up to me, like, uh, um, like I've learned, uh, like people cope in different ways. Um, and so I tried to just kind of go in the non-extreme 
end of right. coping, which, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, sounds like is what you did as well. Um, yeah, and I don't think, you know, whether you're tricking yourself or you're really productive, either way, if it's helping, it's helping, and you're certainly not hurting anybody. You're, you're in a strange way, making things better. You're not disparaging right. your ex. It's a good... I yeah. Mean, nobody loses and everybody wins, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, And, uh, yeah, I mean, in this... And, like, I think... I Like, I made it a point, too, was, like, that... Because um, I was worried that she would see this and think that it was, like, going to be 40 days of me being, like, oh, that, <laughs> you know, that horrible, you know, like... But it's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's more like just um, in a selfish way, I guess, making myself feel better. But I guess that's what a lot of people don't try in after breakups is that they don't, they don't always think about, like, I should just make myself feel better. Um, yeah, versus, you're entitled. I mean, if you're, right. if you're hurting the other person, even regardless of who was right or wrong or if any of that happened, that's between you guys. But you're entitled to... Uh, deal with your sorrow and and this is a great way to do it i think it, more people should do it yeah well i get that i might break up with my girlfriend <laughs> i don't do that man <laughs> yeah see uh you guys got because you're doing a show based off of how you guys met right yeah well you know what it's funny we didn't even really meet at disneyland we actually met at universal studios doing an improv show together but she was a princess at Disneyland, oh, I don't know, a while back, and uh, I worked there doing improv shows. We worked there at the same time, but we never met. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, we, we wrote a show that we're working on uh, about rivalry between a younger and an older princess, one that's aging out of the role, <laughs> and a younger one. She always calls it, like, uh, she compares it to the show Nashville. I compare it to the, to the movie uh, All About Eve. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have a bit of an age difference, so that just shows our reference. Sure. <laughs> but it's like a mix of the movie Showgirls and Hooper with Burt Reynolds. It's just a good old rivalry. You know, <laughs> Hooper and Showgirls. Yeah. Was that the selling point? You just walked <laughs> sure. in, just like slammed a script on the desk, and you're like, Hooper, Showgirls, buy it or get the fuck out. They said sold, and uh, that's the, all we ever talked to. Nice. We did sell it as an all about Eve Nashville thing in the room. That's how that was part of the pitch, believe it or not. And then we did watch Showgirls and Hooper when we had to do a rewrite. We were a little stuck, and we went, "Let's go back to great rivalry movies." And uh, I put it out to Twitter, and we got a bunch of great suggestions. But then I did remember Hooper, how it's about a younger stuntman and an older stuntman, and uh, it, you know, it's it, it, in some ways it's not gender specific. So we right. we believe it or not, we took the opening almost literally from Hooper where if you've seen the movie, he's a stuntman, you never see his face in the beginning and he's just padding up and getting ready for his thing. And so the opening of the show, Wonderland, is her getting ready to be a princess with, <laughs> you know, like corn pads on her feet, tiara, <laughs> boot pad, and all that stuff. That's awesome. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it sounds awesome. Uh <laughs> Was there, so is there any element of like, you, uh, oh, so you guys didn't meet there, but did you write in any of that element or does it focus just? Yeah, we, uh, well, we didn't, there, there is a, um, she has a lot of input, but it's not focus. When we first did our first draft, it was more of an ensemble piece, and then our second draft, we were shifted more towards the rivalry between the two girls. But there are a lot of, there are three characters and a lot of uh, specific things in the script that come from our personal experience. And then if, if it ever were to get picked up, uh, we have episode ideas like crazy from things that have really happened in the park. Yeah. Were there, <laughs> were there points where like you guys were remembering things differently? Like in di like di any kind of disagreements? <laughs> Not really because, because we, have the same experiences. We get to tell them like we remember them. Oh, okay. Like, but we pretty much agree on the feel of the place. I mean, it was a little different because she was in a different department. She was in what's called the character department, and mm -hmm. I was in the, like a, like entertainment performer department, which was uh, we had a union on our side, and so it was a little different. I, I think they treat us a little bit better. Oh, okay. Although our union was pretty shitty. In fact, it has a no strike clause built into their contract <laughs> where we can't 
strike, so I don't even know what the point is. <laughs> it was called AGVA, the American Guild of Variety Artists, which I think began like back in Vaudeville to stop people from you know horrible treatment on the Vaudeville circuit. So <laughs> that's what you're dealing with. Nice. No, that sounds awesome, man. I, well, I uh, yeah, I wish you guys all the luck on that. That sounds. Thank you. Like, I wanna, yeah, I want to. I want to see we that. We turned in our second draft, and we're just waiting to hear. I think we'll be getting a different notes. I mean, I, I, as always, the other again, but we made it this far, and that that was like a really nice surprise. So so far, so good. That's awesome, and uh, hopefully yeah. the Hooper intro makes it. And <laughs> it would be a personal victory for me. It's personal one of my victory, yeah. Gotta uh, go get a corned beef sandwich. Yeah, that. celebrate. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I mean, another uh, another reason why uh, you know I asked you to be on was because actually, so the day that um, my ex broke up with me um, was the day that you gave me the Casino Royale Quantum back to back. You sent me a Twitter like, what's a good Bond movie to get over this situation, right? Yeah, well, because the way it went down was basically, it was like, I kind of knew, it happened on a Sunday morning, I kind of knew it was going to happen Saturday night, and uh, uh, so Sunday morning it just kind of happened, and she just left, and uh, I was just kind of sitting on my couch, and I was like fuck it, I'm watching Goldfinger. So I put Goldfinger on, and then I was kind of thinking, I was like, there's got to be something here that, like, I could, I can, I, there's got to be a way to get over it, and I want to watch a Bond movie. And I was like, I bet Matt would know, like, exactly. And, and, and it, I mean, you were right. Like, it was, it was exactly what you said. Um, which is amazing about those two movies is that together they make this like awesome film, but, um, the, the catharsis of it is like, you don't get that in any really, I don't think any other era of the Bond films. Yeah. Except no, you don't because the, the closest you ever get is on Her Majesty's Secret Service where he loses his wife, but it's not the same thing. I mean... In Casino Royale, she betrays him, but then also you learn she was kind of trying to do the best that she could to save him. So right. it's it's nice and gray, like life always is, you know. Yeah, cause especially yeah, because I was gonna say like with uh, like going into um, to Dimes Are Forever, like you know he's going after Blofeld, but then you know halfway through the movie he's trying to bang Plenty O'Toole, so it was like mourning period. Yeah, it's not that long. Well. Yeah, where you're getting, you know, and, and like whereas in Quantum you're getting actual, you know, uh, you could feel that, um, you know, the the carryover from the first movie, and something that like I kind of noticed for the first time watching them back to back was that, and maybe this could be total like Room Two Thirty Seven reading into it, but That's it's right. almost like the stages of um, break up and dealing with it because at the end of Casino Royale, like, you know, he has that, the line where he says the bitch is dead and it's kind of that irrational, you know, uh, hate, hate that you kind of spew out sometimes Yeah. after, you know, after you're done wrong, but you could tell that he doesn't really mean it. Right. Like, he's like, just protecting himself. Yeah. Right. And then by the end of Quantum, you're seeing a guy who's ready to grow as a person and, uh, you know, even not killing, uh, killing him at the end of the movie. I kind of saw it as this, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, like five hour journey of, a of heartbreak. Yeah. But just set between two, two, uh, two Bond films. So like, it, it like, I think it was just exactly what I needed to see. Uh, it, it's making me want to watch them both again. It's been a long time. So I I can't remember the last time I watched them back to back. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And like it's weird. Like I wonder how much of it was going into the writing. Um, if that was kind of kind of planned out, or if because you know you're looking at two different directors and stuff. Like the idea of just continue like having that natural. Um, 
like you're you're watching a guy get over a girl, but by yeah. taking down an international ring of terrorists and yeah, I think I, I I'm bummed that the writer strike happened because it really seemed to have uh, sold short the script, and I wish they could have given the director of Quantum his time he wanted to edit because he made it very clear that he was rushed and that the writing wasn't ready. And so yeah. I, I like that movie a lot more than most people do, but I think it could have been something pretty great. It would have been like a really, like almost an Empire Strikes Back of a trilogy, I think. If it right. Were to yeah. Something. Yeah. Like I definitely watching it that, uh, that night, um, was, uh, like, that was, like, I've, I've seen that movie a bunch of times, but it was, like, the best I've ever thought that movie was. Um, and, uh, and maybe, I guess, you know, go, I guess, I guess you, it's just, a, it's an unfortunate thing that it's, like, you gotta watch another two-hour movie in order to <laughs> truly appreciate the other two-hour movie. But, yeah, it's um, a flaw in that movie, but it yeah. does help when you watch them together. So... With uh, like with that, and then and also like um, going back to like when you were reading the Bond books and trying to watch every Bond movie during that breakup, like what do you think it is about um, about those films and those books that uh, that could bring you that kind of release? That's a good question. I I think it's a couple things. Or maybe a few. I had such a nostalgia for watching them as a kid mm -hmm. with my dad, or just by myself, or with like my stepbrother. And then um, I love British things. Yeah. I love action adventure. I like uh, period pieces. But also, I think it was something that I had no connection to my ex with, and so it was like there's nothing that, or very few things in it that would remind me of her. It wasn't a shared property of ours, mm -hmm. so it felt like. I could just go back to the drawing board here and, and set that aside. And, you know, there's there's a lot of music and movies that are off limits when you go through a breakup. And sure. You go back into your collection and go, all right, these are mine. These are mine. These are mine. I can watch this. This is safe. You know. Yeah, that's. And so it was just a refuge. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, just kind of going through, uh, like through our movies and stuff, just splitting it up. Yeah, I know exactly. And then, like, I got to, like, the, uh, like, she had actually gotten me the box set for Christmas, so it was kind of a oh, weird yeah, thing true. where I'm kind of looking at it, and I'm like, I'm going to watch a lot of these, I have a feeling, but knowing that they were, because she, I, I really started to get her into them kind of towards the end of our relationship, and, uh, and then she was listening to the podcasts and stuff, and, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get that, yeah, that connection of just kind of that going to something familiar. Um, yeah. Yeah, that no, makes, yeah, makes sense. So how many square feet would you say that tent is, or the fort? Um, well, let's see, I was doing measurements, um, which is funny to do measurements and then go to a crowded thrift store and try to measure sheets while there's, like, old women <laughs> trying to pile pillows up and shit. But I think it was, like... Um, I think it was like 12 feet across and maybe six and a half feet um, the other way. That's and, a respectable fort. Yeah, it's not bad. You know, it's it's cozy. Um, yeah. I mean, there's enough room in here. Like, you know, I've had, like I said, I've had people in here. So I fit a camera and a tripod and, you know, people being interviewed and stuff. So it's, uh, it's not pretty, bad. I had like a weird, good. like even like the first night sleeping in it like, closing the flaps and stuff, it was, like, I had that weird kind of, uh, like, that, uh, like, buzzing feeling that you have when you're a kid, like, before Christmas or something, you know, like, like, when you're going to bed on Christmas Eve, where yeah. it's just, like, it's, like, it's calm, and, like, you're just, like, enveloped, and, right. like, it was just this weird thing, so it's, like, I should be, it's, like, I'm alone, I'm a grown man sleeping alone in a fort, like, my girlfriend just left me, but I feel so at peace right now, and, like, so calm and serene and, like, happy. It was so weird. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. But, uh, I, it's good that you're chronicling it all, too. I know when I went through my thing, I was I was also 
growing a beard for the first time in a long time too because at Disney you couldn't have a beard back then. And oh, so yeah. I think I was chronicling my beard growth and putting it on my MySpace blog <laughs> or something like that. That was the best you could do back then. Yeah, it, it was... Um... Yeah, it was just one of those things where it was like, I figure, like, I'm going to, this is going to be weird, and I feel like people should know about it, and uh -huh. um, and really even now, like, when I'm doing the interviews and stuff, like, I'm opening up a lot more about, like, I did an interview earlier where I basically told the story of my ex who, the breakup that I had that caused me to move up here, I was engaged, and like, and she like oh, wow. broke it off. So like, Whoa. and that was like really the first time that I had ever like said it on like camera or really like I've told people know about it and I've talked about it, but it just felt d weird like telling that story on camera. Wait, did you did you say you were engaged or she was engaged? I was engaged. Not oh. not the it was the my my past relationship. Um, before I moved up here, I was, uh, yeah. I was engaged. I was with a girl for like four years. Um, I was engaged and then she called it off and then I just kind of like, it was like that. And then I was, I had friends moving up. So I was like, I'm moving up here. Uh, now my life starts over. And then I was like single for a year and a half and then met, uh, the girl who is now my current ex. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, big change after a breakup is good. I always joke with my girlfriend that if she ever left me, I would have no choice but to move to the mountains and like figure out the um, the theory for everything, like string theory <laughs> or you know, like universal theory. Because I would have to immerse myself in something so ridiculous that the only right. positive way I could get through it would be to come up with some amazing mathematical theory. And I'm not a mathematician <laughs> in any way. But that that would that would probably be my fate, and I would die having failed doing that. You know? <laughs> yeah, for some reason, my go-to was always like, uh, even like in high school when I would date girls, and they'd be like, uh, um, you know, and then whatever, and I would always make like the like joke, like I swear to fucking god, I'm gonna become a priest if like another girl breaks up with me. I don't know why that was like the no. go-to. Uh, a that I thought a relationship in high school was the end of everything, uh, uh, and it first uh, and B that my idea was that it was like you know what I'm just gonna like restrict myself from any woman in the entire world because there's no way these, punish them. yeah you gotta punish womankind for one woman That's yeah I'm and taking that's a great a, lesson to take away from that too is like how could you think that a relationship ending in high school is the end of the world and it's boy it's, it's no different even now like. Until until you really find the one that's going to work out. Right. It's it's all heading towards that. Not even in a cosmic way. It's just that's a, by definition now that this has happened. It means there's there's going to be something else. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's been uh, it's been as positive. It could like it could be for a uh, negative situation. <laughs> well, that's good. That's so, you know, ask. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, this is, I mean, like I said, I, I appreciate you taking the time out to, to do this, man. It's, oh, my pleasure. I looked at your blog and it felt like you seemed like you were doing this for all the right reasons. I, I think when I read what it was, I thought, oh, this could be great or horrible. It could right. be someone who's out to get their ex or, you know, right. you really seem to be doing something positive. And I think it'd be nice if people saw it. It's kind of an inspiring thing and. Thanks, if it's man. making you feel better, that that's fantastic. I, my hats off to you, Dave. Thanks, man. So I don't I don't want to because I don't want to keep you too much. Um, so I have if you could indulge me for the show, I was one thing that I was wondering. Um, I was wondering what if if you knew what if Ian Fleming had any <laughs> advice when it comes yeah. to a breakup. Sure, sure. I'm trying to think of his his advice for uh, issues of the heart is probably well. Let me see. Let me see. I have to turn the thing around because you can't. Oh you right, know. yeah. Well, he's not. Yeah, you mean you know. I'm gonna look for him, but I. I say, Dave, don't you know that when I was writing on Her Majesty's Cyber Surveys um, on a golden typewriter. 
I thought to myself, I'm going to kill Bond's wife because she, she's a woe man. <laughs> woe men come for your heart. When they come, they come for your heart. And so uh, I had already ended Casino Royal with The Bitch is Dead, so how can I one-up myself? Well, why not have her get shot in the forehead? <laughs> and that's why I've never had Bond fall in love again, because how do I top it? Does she fall into a trash compactor? I don't know. And if you know, let me know, because I'd be happy to write it. Because down with the feminine mystique, I say. You know I have a problem with women right. and homosexuals. So that's not saying anything about me at all. I'm blameless. I'm clean. But um, that's it. Move on. <laughs> you know, find another conquest, preferably one with sun-flecked haunches. That sounds fantastic. There. Yes. Well, I must be going, and I must give you back to Matt, whom I've still never quite met. I met him once in passing, but uh, goodbye. Thank you, Ian. Thank you so much. Who was that? That was, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, whew. I thought he was dead. I know. He just keeps coming back. Oh, my God. He lives forever in that golden typewriter. Wait, here he is. <laughs> This whole time, Ian Fleming's been this Chinese cat. <laughs> oh, man. Matt, this has been awesome, man. Oh, my pleasure, Thank David. you so much, nice man. Nice to meet you and nice to talk to you. Yeah, man. And, um, yeah, do you, you, have a, you have a good night. And um, is there anything, actually, did you want to, uh, do you want to plug anything on my fort? Boy. In my fort? Um, <laughs> uh, fort plug. I guess, you know, there's just all the regular stuff. If you like James Bond, check out the James Bonding podcast Absolutely. with Matt Myra. And then if you like uh, voices and things like Ian Fleming, check out the Super Ego podcast. That's that's my always been, like, my favorite thing to do with my buddies. Um, and uh, there's some Bond stuff on there, some other movie stuff. But, yeah, that's that, that would be it. That's it. Go superego.com and on iTunes. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, take care, Dave. Good luck to you. I'll be uh, I'll be watching. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Okay. All right. You too. Later, man. Bye.